Don't we love success stories and don't we love to hear people tell us how they improved from rheumatoid arthritis and how they got their life back. And especially when they now, you know, experiencing the joy of reclaimed movement in their fingers and other parts of the body. We're going to do that again on this episode. This episode is with a guest. Her name is Inta. She's based in Melbourne, Australia, which is a southern major city in Australia. And she has a phenomenal story to share with us, not just around dietary changes, but her um, reconnection with God. And so we're going to be talking about Christianity today. We're going to be talking about the uh, community uh, experience that she got with that, the changes to the way she thinks, the incantations, the way that she believes that her health has been restored. And so that's what we're in for today. If that doesn't sit well with you because you're in a different culture, different part of the world, that's okay. But that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I can't wait. So Inter, welcome and tell us, give us your sort of, give us your before and after um, before we dive deep. Hi, Clint. Hi, everyone. My name is Inter and I've got a good news story for you. It all started not so well, though, in 2016. Every bone in my body, in my hands and wrists, felt as if it was broken. It was a terrible situation. But fast forward to today, the rheumatoid arthritis that was diagnosed back then and that I was taking methotrexate for for five whole years that is all a thing of the past now. And I'm so grateful. I'm so happy. I'm so absolutely um, overjoyed that I can be talking to you today and showing you my hands and showing you the fingers and rejoicing with you. And it can be done. So please remember that, everyone. Wonderful. What a beautiful way to get started. And isn't lovely to to move those fingers like that. It, it's such a, a joy when we're able to realize that um uh that freedom again in the body. So, you know, we've we've uh we've got a lot of anticipation here around what uh actually you went through. You mes- mentioned the methotrexate. I didn't say that in the introduction, I don't think, but you've you've come off methotrexate after five years of usage. But let's rewind here. Um, you obviously also did the Patterson program and you've changed okay. your diet. So we've got that to talk about. But let's just have you guide us through the diagnosis. Tell us how it came about and the visit with a rheumatologist, your treatment suggestions. Walk us through. Right. Well, It all happened, as I said, mentioned before, in 2016. That was the year that my husband, my late husband, was very, very seriously ill and he was approaching the end of his life. It was just a terrible thing. And he had an autoimmune disease. And blow me down, that year in October, around about my birthday, I went to the rheumatologist. I was sent there by my GP, my doctor, and that was the diagnosis, rheumatoid arthritis. And, of course, he said that the only thing that I could do was to go on the methotrexate. And now, having listened to Clint over the years, I realised that methotrexate is probably the best of a bad bunch of of, um, medications. So I did go on the methotrexate and the doctor over the years, the rheumatologist, he was trying to get me to go on these other um, drugs as well, like to make a cocktail because he wanted to uh, kind of cut it off at the pass, if you like. But I refused. I just stood my ground and I said, no, no, I want to just take the methotrexate. Well, then he upped the dosage, didn't he? He went up to about 20 milligrams. And I felt so sick taking the 20 milligrams. And I just went back to him and I said, no, I'm not taking the 20 milligrams. 
and then he put, put me back to 15 and then I took myself back to 10 and I kept on the 10 for the whole of the time apart from those two two or three times that he tried to get me to um, basically increase the dose. Mm. And, so, yeah. so and let, I felt let, too let. sick. I felt too nauseous, too ill, and it was affecting my emotional uh, state as well. Um, it was causing depression. Um, it was causing great unhappiness, um, the skin troubles. It was causing uh, like rashes all over the body. So I knew that 20 was wrong and 15 was wrong. 10 was just manageable. Mm. Mm. Can yeah. you, um, given the rheumatologist was aiming to increase dosage, that's an indication that symptoms were not quite totally under control. So what I want to get an idea of, where did you hurt? Where were you seeing symptoms? How bad was it? And can you talk about maybe the maybe one of the worst mornings or worst days that you had? Well, the, the symptoms were in the, the hands and the wrists. And I had to walk around with a splint on my hands because I just couldn't move the hands. And they were swollen, they were throbbing, and it felt like it was really um, progressing and getting worse. Yeah, mm. and I was scared. Clint, I was frightened. I was scared. Fear had gripped my soul. And not only the fear of losing my husband, but the fear of what's going to happen to me because I had read up about this illness and I knew that it can spread. And I know your story as well. I know your story extremely well. I've researched, I've listened to all that you've said about your <laughs> journey. So, um, yeah, so all that was playing out in my mm. mind and my emotions. And, uh, yeah, it was a, they were dark days, actually. Mm. Mm. Okay, we'll come back to you in a second, but let's just get closure. Your husband did pass. Um, did. That would have been tremendously catastrophic for you emotionally and and all of the associated, um, I want to say, sort of consequences of that with the mm. yeah, just everything, right? So um, how, how did that affect your health, both mentally and physically? Um, yes, it was it was um, amazing actually. Just uh, it a lot of the time, ju just after his passing, it passed in like a bit of a fog. It was like, but I had support from friends, thank goodness. And it was at that at that stage that I first heard the words from a song, and the and the chorus in the song is, "May God's love be with you always." And and very early in the piece, I reached out to God because nothing else seemed to be able to help. And I, I reached out to God almost blind in grief and in sorrow. I didn't know, I wasn't all happy, chappy at that stage. No. No, it was a it was a very very challenging place, and it was just a very tentative step on my part. But I did reach out my hand to God, my poor hands. Mm. I lifted them both up. The the very painful hands. I lifted them above my head towards God, and I just imagined that God was reaching down and just hearing my prayers, hearing my cries for help, just hearing my cries of grief. It's an un, it's an indescribable thing, but I I hope I'm doing it justice. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Um, have you always had a um, an association with a church or have you been someone who is familiar with the Bible uh, or is it something that um, appeared right for the first time in your life at this time? No, it, and this was not the first time. Um, I've been a Christian um, since 1963, actually, when I was 12 years old, and I went forward at at a rally. It was a 
a Leighton Ford rally here in Melbourne. And it, it from then on, it's been a steady progression of uh, just living out your faith and growing in the faith and everything. But with my husband's passing, that really tested the whole of the meaning of life. And it's the mystery of it all. It's the mystery of life and death. I just didn't get it. I couldn't work it out. I couldn't get my head around it. And this was the this has been the biggest and most challenging test of my whole life. Mm, yeah, I mean, just to put it into a little yeah. nutshell here, you've you've lost your life partner, who you committed your life journey with, Absolutely. who you love and adore, and then you're left on your own. And then yes. at the same time, you've been diagnosed with a, a disease that one of my doctors said, of all the diseases I would not want to get, rheumatoid yeah. arthritis would That's be right. at the top of my list. That's right. So. Right. You've That's- gotten that at the same time, <clears throat> and and uh, and then you're dealing with this double blow, and then you've you've reconnected in a much more you know comprehensive way with God, and we'll talk also about other lifestyle changes that you've made. That and then yes. then we're going to hear about how this helped you. Oh, everything has helped. Every step of the way has helped, Clint, and it's been such a gradual, gentle, slow, steady progression. It's like climbing up the stairs in slow motion. Well, sometimes you go back a step or two, but then you keep climbing again and everything follows on from the previous. It's all in order. Do you know what I'm saying? This is not haphazard grabbing at this and plucking at that and hoping to goodness this will work. No, our steps are ordered and that is the mystery and the wonder of it all. Mm. When did you first start to notice some improvements? Oh, I well, the, the improvements I noticed first were Peter died in 2016 About two years later, and in the meantime, I had been following Patterson Program. I'd been doing um, um, acupuncture and meditation and all of those things. But then a friend suggested that I go to, a Christian friend suggested that I go to a healing service at a local church. And I was a little bit (laughs) sceptical. To tell you the truth, I'd never been to something like this before. Um, It just seemed a little bit strange to me and I was uh, umming and ahhing about the whole thing, but she kept asking, gently asking, have you been yet? She kept saying, have you been yet? Have you been yet? Because my And she said, my best friend goes there. She plays, you know. So I ended up going and that was a very pivotal point in the whole of proceedings because I ended up going six times to six of those beautiful sessions and with each session of prayer and um, contemplation and beautiful music, soft music and, and, oh, it was just wonderful, so gentle, so good, and I gained a lot of... of, um, healing from that and my belief just like opened up like a flower. Oh, I was, I was yeah. crushed. My depression lifted and the fear started to lift as well because this is not just a oh, little bit of scaredness. This is crippling fear and uh, it started to lift and it did. The fear and the... And the um, the worry and the sadness, they were the first to go before I felt anything physically in my oh, hand. So that is profound. Emotional yep. healing had to happen first, Clint. And audience, please understand that often behind a, a serious illness like this, behind fear, there are underlying issues and, and psychological, emotional issues. and the Lord absolutely 
targets those first because he knows that it has to be healed first. Things have mm-hmm. to happen in a certain order. Yeah, so you've made me excited to sort of uh, mention some things here. First of all, you're, the onset of your condition, um, you know, we know that it just, there's a, it's, it's like a, a camels and the straw sort of situation, right? You don't just one day eat one food and that triggers rheumatoid arthritis. Does it? Yeah. So, so leading into the eventual passing of your husband, um, there was obviously several years likely of time where there was creating a a sense of concern of worry of fear and that was building before the actual uh uh the day so you then the onset followed likely as a result of of um some lifestyle things and some past things but but a real trigger was the fear and worry about the possible loss of your husband and then when it came time for the uh the um the spiritual healing sessions or the 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 um, the prayer sessions in that you've got yeah you know, as you said you said the your own belief about your future changed and you've got this tremendous community support which are all rallying behind you and saying yes. you can do this we are here for you and then and this is equally important as those two the power of intention and prayer putting that collective picture and prayer to God and to the universe to say, this is the outcome we want. Absolutely, yeah. And Nisha Manic, rheumatologist, she talks about it from the spiritual and and, uh, also from a a God point of view. Uh, But she talks about that, that this is clinically, like in science and physical experiments, proven to change the outcome of physical matter so whether or not there's some people on the fence about religion or about spirituality in terms of intention human intention the concept of energy and materialization of matter mm-hmm. follow the work of uh, uh dr tiller and dr nisha manic because this stuff's real so what it a prof- it, what a profound profound intervention you've had there what six sessions you did Yes, yes. But then COVID came. Um, <laughs> yeah. On top of everything, COVID hit. And I don't know about you over there in the States, but here in Aussie land, the lockdowns were savage. They were really, they went on for months and months and months. Everything closed down. Uh, my church closed down. My choir chat cha- cha- closed down. My my pool that I go to every day, that all changed. Everything closed down. And here I was at home on my own. Yep, on my own. I've got the telephone and I'm allowed to go out for a walk about an hour a day or so. Yeah. Yeah. What did I do? I turned to the internet like I did when I found the Patterson program. I turned to the internet. And this is, was, a, was a renewed turning to the internet and what should I find there? But in YouTube, all of these wonderful sermons, Bible teaching, um, reflections on the scriptures, it was just, it was, oh, it was heavenly what I discovered on YouTube. And on because, you're, yes, because you're I'm accessing their knowledge. I was yeah. looking for it. Yeah, yeah. Because yes. you're not then just accessing the person who is the minister of your local church who just happens <laughs> to be. No, you can access like whoever you want with whatever sort of angle on the teachings that you want. Worldwide. And I even discovered people that had recently gone to God. They, they had died. And they're wonderful teachers, wonderful preachers, wonderful, wonderful teachers. And I was just gobbling up all this wonderful new knowledge every single day and I'm taking notes, I'm listening, listening all day long. When I go for my walks, I take my phone with me, listen to uh, YouTube everywhere. And under the mask, I was saying words of scripture that I'd learned (laughs) off my heart. (laughs) So at least people couldn't see my lips moving. (laughs) 
I think, oh, she's talking to herself because it was under the mask, you see, so could get away with everything. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, what um, This actually uh, overlaps with some stuff that I teach, which is the, the affirmations and incantations and how this language that we use is actually really powerful. So can you tell us, if you remember offhand, uh, any of the uh, the more powerful scripture repetitions that you that you use, um, things that you like to say to yourself? Yes, yes, I can do that, uh, Clint. And it's uh, let me um, just mention that this is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> I do not. It's not just click of the fingers and you can do it because. By the time that you are in the grip of this um, crippling fear and worry and depression, it's become almost like a habit to a person and one thought at a time needs to be dismantled and not just dismantled but replaced. So you take one negative thought out of your mind You replace it with a positive thought from the scriptures, and I turn to the scriptures constantly. They were my source, the scriptures. And after a while, you become conscious of waking in the morning and not having a negative thought in your mind. That's what we're aiming to get. We're aiming to wake up in the morning and say, And for the first thing that we say is, thank you, Lord, for making me whole. And if you don't believe in God, you can just say, thank you for making me whole. Even when you're not whole, even when you're not healed, even when you are in agony, even when you are absolutely distressed. You just keep saying, thank you for making me whole. And that puts it into the present active tense. And um, you mentioned, Clint, could I share some words of the Bible? Please. With um, the audience. I'd love to. I was going to ask you if you would allow me to do that. So thank you very much for inviting me to do that. Scriptures for healing and recovery, Um, the very first scripture that I learned, and that was at the church services, at the healing services, and that the reference for that scripture is Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. And that says, the first three verses of that says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits and blessings, who forgives all our sins and trespasses, who heals all our diseases. I read those words and I thought, that can't apply to me. How can God heal Rheumatoid arthritis, that's too difficult for God. This is me reasoning. And I and I thought to myself, no, this is written in the Bible. I'm just going to start saying it. I'm going to, without actually understanding it all, I'm just going to say it. And I and from that day on, I've kept on saying it and I will for the rest of my life. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. But I trust in you, Lord. You are my God. My times are in your hands. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, it says, By his stripes we are healed. There's no doubt about that, absolutely no doubt about that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. 
Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them. He sent his word and healed them. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me on paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be for you and they will be on your food and water. He will take away sickness from us. Exodus chapter 3, 23, verse 25. And isn't it interesting, Clint, that the Lord will bless our food and water. I love that verse in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. And that's what, and that every time I took Patterson program, I was saying, Lord, Lord, most high. Lord, my Saviour, bless this food and water for my health and strength and for the glory of your kingdom. Bless it. And look, he has. He has. Every mouth he blesses. (laughs) (laughs) Lord, you restore me to health and let me live. In your love. You keep me from the pit of destruction. That's in Isaiah. And in the New Testament, let's listen to the words of Jesus. In Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus said, Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you will have already received it, and it will be yours. And that is so true. I mean, there's that 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 statement is almost the guidelines for life. And uh yes. given given the source, it literally is. Um so um <laughs> yeah, and uh, and as I said before, um, you know. Uh, some research has been done. Uh, Dr. Nisha Manick's interviews that I've done with her explains how this has been done. Uh, yes. it, it, it's um, it's incredible. So you are you are a living example of someone who has transformed your health by applying some um, you know uh, responsible lifestyle changes and then adding this uh, over the top of that. Yes. Um, and 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 I just want you to. Tell us what it feels like when you read out these scriptures. What what what's your physiological state as you talk about this? I am quivering with joy, Clint. I am just I I can feel the Holy Spirit. He is in me, and he is on in he is in all of us. I just feel that he is guiding this session for us today, because. Well, he's in, I, we've invited him to come along and he is with us and we just give him all the praise and the glory. And we're, what we're talking about here and to the listeners and to our audience, we need to realise that this is not just, just um, physical healing. It is holistic healing and wholeness consists of mind, body 
and spirit. So let's all be mindful of that and not just focus on one area, but try and bring all those three areas together. And this is what um, this is what has happened in my life, and that's all I can say. Taste and see that the Lord is good and he can be trusted. His word is sure. He doesn't tell a lie to confuse us and to trick us. No, his word is can be relied upon and we can depend on his word. And um, when, I, when I mentioned to the... Um, <laughs> I digress a little bit now, Clint. I'll go back to my rheumatologist. Yes, please. Yes, let's hear what he said. Yes, because (laughs) last year, I I think I mentioned to you in my email that there was this defining date in last year, in 2021, when it finally sort of all clicked into place. And um, that's when the, the belief gates really flung wide open. Yeah. I just let my own reasoning, my own trying to understand it all, I just put it all to one side and I just said, Lord, I believe and I receive. And a month later, that that happened in May of last year, and a month later in June, I gave up the metric. I just stopped taking it. Stop. I thought, no. Well, there was a, like a, I don't know, I just decided that I'll give it a go and I'll stop. And I went to the rheumatologist and he didn't really want to talk about it and he didn't want to ask any questions, nothing. He wasn't really interested and that was it. And now this is nearly 18 months later and I just, I'm, I've never felt better really, yeah transformed um and have you seen him since no no and 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 just to clarify right i I can't remember if we spoke about this briefly before or after we hit record here but but you have you wake up no symptoms at all right you just no i told him i said to him um uh doctor um I'm feeling really well. I've been healed. I said, the Lord has healed me. And that's when he didn't want to know any more about it. I said, I've been psychologically, physically, and um, emotionally healed. Yeah. So it's bodily, emotionally, and um, spiritually spiritually healed. That's exactly right, Clint. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> mm. it, it's, 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 it's a funny <laughs> it's like born again yes born again you paint yeah. a funny picture of the uh the very pragmatic and 10 year 10 years of education rheumatologist sitting oh, there with oh. with his uh white coat on and his um you know stern look on his face as the next patient comes in and you walk in all happy and bouncing like i'm yeah. healed i'm healed and he's like okay <laughs> here we go he said, "Well, you don't need you don't need to come to me anymore." I said, "Oh, how come?" Because <laughs> I felt like talking to him about it. You see, I said, "Oh, how come?" And he said, "Oh, no, you don't. No, no, you don't need to come anymore um, because you don't. Oh, because I don't need any more blood tests. That was the reason why I don't have to come anymore." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he's not, so I'm not having any more blood tests. <laughs> Oh, because you're not on the methotrexate. Yeah, right, okay. Right. Now I understand. Right. Yeah. So he's like, well, you don't need to say okay, well, look, you know, as I as I say, it's a it's a funny juxtaposition of the 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 exuberant healed, you know, healed lady who comes in bouncing off the walls and the yeah. and and yeah. Okay, well a 73-year-old, you know, or back then I was 72. So mm-hmm. okay, so I'm nearly I'm one two weeks off 73. So uh, I just thank the Lord because one one other promise is that he will renew us and restore that which was lost. And time and time in the, in the Bible, Clint, it talks about restoration. And I love that word mm. because truly, and there's one verse here that says from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, one of my favourites, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, 
who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, heal, and establish you. That's a big promise there. That's Mm -hmm. a big promise. There's Mm -hmm. no maybes there. There's no perhapses. There's no all. That's, I think this is a bit too hard for the Lord. No, there's no, there's no arguing. It just yes. will happen. It will happen. And well, it's up to us to receive. I love it. I love that, you know, we're, we're ultimately after complete confidence and control over our condition. And when you have um, that belief that is instilled upon you with great certainty, then uh, thy will be done, right? Thy there is so much power in this. Yeah. Thy will be done. Those are beautiful words of creation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That creates. Words are powerful. Words create. And that's why we say our words. We don't think that these thoughts We say them aloud because there's power in the spoken word. Mm -hmm. I used to say over and over again, I used to say pain-free, drug-free, back to massive energy, pain-free, drug-free, back to... Like, I would have said that 50,000 times. I mean, I used to say it 200 times a day. Well, that's Um, you. Clint, that has healed you. I I declare it now. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, a lot. I, yeah, and and uh, I have I used to have lists of uh, things that I would uh, say to myself each day, and always rhyming kind of things. Like oh, well, I don't even remember them now, but but just oh, really? things that. Oh yes, that we're going back a while now since I used to. But uh, I used to say things like I, I'm. I'm stronger and more powerful than any time in my life. I'm stronger and more powerful than any time in my life. And by the way, I started doing this many years ago when I attended Anthony Robbins seminars, who's really big into affirmation yeah, incantations. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's um, uh, he has uh, he has a generic one. You can search it online. It's real good if if people are just wanting to be feel empowered. There's one online that it's the Anthony Robbins affirmation. It sounds and it starts out with, um, "Now I am, you know, now I am the voice. I lead, not follow. I am. I create, not destroy." And one of the lines is, um, um, "I'm led by God." You know, there's some powerful. Yeah. So. Yes. You know, these the, we're, we're really getting deep into this concept of self-talk, yes. self-belief, affirmations, uh, uh, visualizing our future, having community yes. around us that believe in us, yes. spirituality. This yes. is powerful stuff. Yeah. And, and there's a verse that springs to mind. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, not just some things, all things through Christ. And I am strong. Be strong in the Lord. Strong. And then you turn around and say, that's a verse. And then you turn around and say, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we use the I ams, the I am statements. And you go back to the start of the Bible, back to Moses, when he met the Lord on top of the mountain, and the Lord said to Moses, go back to Egypt and tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses said, who shall I say sent me? And the Lord said, I am has sent you. I am that I am. Mm. How powerful is that? Mm-hmm. And it is Jesus himself who says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth. I am the good shepherd who gives up his life for the sheep. I am the bread of life and the bread of heaven. I am the everlasting water that gushes up inside all of us. He's the mm-hmm. great I am. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is the power of I am. So let us say, I am healed. 
by his stripes. I am. Yeah. <laughs> And if you say that a, a, a thousand times a day as well, Clint, <laughs> that works absolute wonders. Oh, there's no doubt, Enter. We've right, got a lot of things, a lot of things we need to do a thousand times a day. We've got to say, we've got to say the words to ourselves. We've got yes. to move our joints a lot. We have to, you know, give thanks. We've got to do a lot of things, but completely agree. And yes. it's well appreciated amongst many different forms or modalities of teaching that whatever you say after the words i am has a profound impact on you as a human and that's why we have to be extremely uh, rigorous to eliminate anything negative that follows i am in our life Such you know as was, I'm not good enough or exactly I'm that has good. to go yeah, that it has, has to, to go, go. It yeah. has to go. and that's they're the thoughts that we replace they're the very thoughts that we say, you be gone, I don't want you in my life, you're not welcome, and then you select which words you want to replace those negative words with. Yeah, and that's powerful. And every young person needs to know that, Clint, as well. I'm, I'm a retired teacher, you see, so I love teaching. I adore teaching. It's in my DNA. I just adore it. <laughs> That explains who I am, you see. And I would, if you know, I just see the need for young people to learn that truth mm. of mm. guard your minds, guard your tongue as well, mm. because the tongue, you can have life or death that comes from your tongue. The words you speak, the words, the words, yeah. So that. isn't that exciting? It is exciting, and we've all um, lifted our enthusiasm for life by speaking with you, Inter. It's been absolutely a, a pleasure to uh, be in your presence and hear your passion and your elation, because passion, elation, and these sort of exquisite sort of words, you know, they're hard to attain when we're often in a dark place with rheumatoid arthritis. And so I pray and have my 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 uh, hope and intention for this interview is that the people who have uh, who have uh, embraced what we've discussed today and learnt from you are able to put some of this into their lives and have less pain, more elation, more joy, because we can all do with more of that. So yeah. I want to say thank you very much for sharing with us today and for all that you've been through to get to a point where you have so much to offer. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Clint, for inviting me. And I I just didn't have the – I thought I didn't have the confidence to do it, but look, we've done it. We've done it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And would you allow me, please, Clint, to say the blessing on all of us? Please, let's wrap up with a closing prayer. Yes, the ironic blessing. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and give us his shalom peace in the beautiful, the glorious, the wonderful, the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Oh,